Today I learned that when Michael Jackson granted Weird Al Yankovic permission to do Fat, a parody of Bad, Jackson allowed him to use the same set built for his own Bad video from the Moonwalker film. Yankovic said that Jackson's support helped to gain approval from other artists he wanted to parody. I enjoyed this note from the Wikipedia page. Greater than Paul McCartney, also a Yankovic fan, refused Yankovic permission to record the parody of Wings, Live and Let Die, titled Chicken Pot Pie, because, according to Yankovic, McCartney is a strict vegetarian and he didn't want a parody that condoned the consumption of animal flesh, though McCartney suggested possibly changing the parody to Tofu Pot Pie. Yankovic found this wouldn't fit around the chorus of the parody, based on making the sound of a chicken throughout it. Yeah but what about this till from the the article? This is hilarious. Greater than on numerous occasions Prince refused Yankovic permission to record parodies of his songs. Yankovic had stated in interviews prior to Prince's death in 2016 that he had approached him every few years to see if he's lightened up. 112. Yankovic related one story where, before the American Music Awards where he and Prince were assigned to sit in the same row, he got a telegram from Prince's management company, demanding he not make eye contact with the artist. Jackson would actively encourage other artists to allow Weird Al to parody their work. He saw it as flattery not mockery. There is also the story that Weird Al wanted to do a parody of Dire Straits, Money for Nothing, and got permission under one condition. Mark Knopfler will play the guitar and no one else. After the recording session Mark Knopfler was kinda pissed, because he thought that his performance in this version was way better than in the original version. Today I learned that Harpoli's friends gave her a full year salary for Christmas in 1956 so that she'd be able to take a year off from work to write. Lee used that time to write To Kill a Mockingbird which has since sold over 30 million copies. Is it just me, or does 30 million copies seem low compared to the book's popularity? Or have we all just been passing around the same classroom set of 30 for 62 years? I was surprised that she was still alive some years ago. She died by succumbing to the curse of a Redditor sadly. My friends threw a party on my B-Day but didn't invite me. Did she have a lot of friends or a few financially lucrative ones? Today I learned that after visiting a prison in Norway that treated prisoners humanely, a warden from North Dakota went back and reformed a prison based on Norway's model. It later saw a sharp decline in violence against inmates and threats against staff. This is similar to a story I read about a prison in the U.S. Seems to me it was Alcatraz where the warden was chastised by his bosses because the grocery bill for his prison was much higher per capita than any other American prison. The warden countered by pointing out that the total cost per capita of housing inmates at his Prison was lower than any other prison. His philosophy was that prisoners that are well fed with good food are happier and less likely to cause problems. This vastly reduced the cost of security staffing and vandalism, etc. Saving money on the whole. But you're destroying an entire industry. I'm happy for her and her prison and its inmates. But as an American it makes me angry that we have such a obvious, easy, relatively and demonstrably effective solutions to problems like this but we refuse to implement them across the board. Sometimes because we're averse to looking to others for guidance. Sometimes because it's easier to be lazy and not change the status quo. But the result is a lower quality of life that just needn't be. Alas, there's hope for the future and it's encouraging to see this success. Who knew basic human decency would cause other people to behave with basic human decency? Edit. Thanks for the silver. Reddit friend. It's my first silver. Today I learned that Volvo opened up the patent for three-point seat belt cause it had more value. As a free life-saving tool than something to profit from. A nice quote from Volvo's manager.
greater than Volvo's managing director Alan Bissell is quoted as saying, The decision to release the three-point seatbelt patent was visionary and in line with Volvo's guiding principle of safety. Also, the inventor of the seatbelt got an award. Greater than Nils Bolin, inventor of the three-point seatbelt, received a gold medal from the Royal Swedish Academy of Engineering Science in 1995 and, in 1999, was inducted into the Automotive Hall of Fame. Thanks Sweden. I heard the inventor would regularly get calls from people thanking them for the seatbelt as it had saved their life. I'm fairly certain Mercedes did the same thing with airbag technology. Today I learned a researcher once played a recording of an elephant who had died. The sound was coming from a speaker hidden in a thicket. The family went wild calling, looking all around. The dead elephant's daughter called for days afterward. The researchers never again did such a thing. My dad died years and years ago, Dodd and I had never watched a single video of him after he died. I just couldn't. Last year, my sister posted a short video clip of my dad on Facebook and I watched it. The minute I heard my dad's voice, I broke down and sobbed. I hadn't been sad before watching it. I hadn't been feeling nostalgic. But the minute the sound of his voice touched my ears, I lost it. Hearing his voice after all these years was like a knife to my soul. That's what I thought about when I read this post those poor elephants. The whole article is an interesting read. They bury their dead, cover them with things, close enough, visit the spots an elephant has died, and touch the dead body the way they would greet a living elephant. Crying face. I feel bad enough when I play a kitten video on YouTube and my cat looks for the kittens. If I received a phone call from my dead father it would destroy the rest of my life searching for him. Today I learned that Elvis Presley's manager sold I hate Elvis badges as a way to make money from people who weren't buying Elvis merchandise. The reason I'm telling you all this is because I'm playing both sides so that I always come out on top, removed, reminds me of Kimmy Schmidt, where one of the plot lines was how much more money the Redskins made off of people burning their jerseys in protest versus actual fans. Same thing as when Brian Bosworth sold t-shirts at his NFL games. He sold all of his pro Boss shirts and also secretly sold a ton of the hating on Boss shirts as well. Today I learned when pimps get arrested. Their cash can legally be confiscated but not their jewelry. This is why pimps wear lots of jewelry so that they can reap on IT for bill money. You see a pimp's love is very different from that of a square. Musical note Don't be fooled by the rocks that I got, I'm just trying to hide my cash from the cops musical note. Rick called in his pimp expert to the shop to make sure this was accurate advice. If I remember correctly it's when, as they are getting arrested, the money will be immediately confiscated, while they may have the chance to give their jewelry to their girlfriend. She can then pawn it for bail money. That's also while they'll have gold jewelry instead of diamonds. Gold has a well-tracked exchange rate for cash, whereas the diamonds do not. Today I learned the Catholic Church has accepted Darwinian evolution as compatible with Christianity since 1950. I was taught AP biology in a Catholic high school by a nun. There was never a question about evolution in her curriculum. God was not mentioned once in the class. Edit. I'd mention the nun had her master's in biology from Villanova and was exceptionally smart. She was in her 70s when I had her and she was sharp as a tack. I breezed through college biology, which I majored in, because of her. Asterisk in the beginning the universe was created. This has made a lot of people very angry and been widely regarded as a bad move. Asterisk. Went to Catholic school until college. Crazy how many people assume I just wasn't taught science as a whole lol. Edit. Guys I don't care what you have to say against Catholicism. I'm not Catholic. I just went to school there haha. <laughs> also, the Big Bang Theory was from a priest, and genetic theory from a monk. 
Today I learned that a guy called Dale Schroeder used his life savings to send 33 students to college. He grew up poor in Iowa, never married, had no children, and worked as a carpenter at the same company for 67 years and only owned two jeans. Asterisk, he said, I never got the opportunity to go to college. So, I'd like to help kids go to college, Nielsen said. Not only did Schroeder have enough money to send a few kids to college, he had enough saved to send dozens, asterisk, asterisk. Finally, I was curious and I said, how much are we talking about, Dale? And he said, oh, just shy of three million dollars. I nearly fell out of my chair, Nielsen remembered, asterisk, greater than own two jeans. So one pair? There's something so beautiful and tragic about this. A stranger gave his life's work away to help others attain what he never had the chance to. If that's not wholesome then I don't know what is. Greater than had no children. He had 33. Loudly crying face.